on? My name is Marie and welcome to my channel. I'm a marine biologist and today I'm going to be reacting to a couple of short clips from some movies that you guys suggested. Let's dive in! Come on, Lara. Okay, so sharks are attracted to blood. A lot of times when there's these kind of tours to go swim with sharks, they do throw chum, which like pieces of dead fish and blood into the water to attract the sharks. Sharks are attract attracted to blood and that you don't need a lot of blood to attract sharks is true. However, whether they would be attracted to human blood well, that's questionable. As we now know, humans are not in any shark's menu. Also, I have no idea what kind of species of shark that is. I think that's a completely made-up species. Here, here it comes. <laughs> here it comes, the shark punch. Bam! <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, sharks don't growl like that, okay? And, I mean, this whole scene. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Lara, I'm sorry. You are very inaccurate. There's a lot of strange things in this scene. First of all, sharks don't growl underwater like that. Uh, yeah, that sounded like a lion or something. There is this common idea that if a shark attacks you, that you have to punch its nose because it's the most sensitive part of the shark. First of all, it's not the most sensitive part of the shark. The two most sensitive parts of the shark are its eyes and gills. The nose can is quite sensitive compared to other body parts because it's where the electroreceptors are. However, trying to punch a shark underwater might not be a good option. Your ability to punch underwater is not the same as the one outside. You're probably gonna punch with much less strength. Second of all, sharks are very fast and they are very agile underwater. You are in its environment. So if you try to punch a shark that is coming at you, you have to punch it at that exact second before it's too late which is very hard to do already outside of the water, so if you're in the water, even more. And if you are without swimming goggles, like Mrs. Lara Croft here. If you've ever swum underwater without goggles, you will know that you won't see anything. You just see like shapes. You don't really have a good perception of depth. So you wouldn't even know when to punch if a shark is coming at that speed at you. Also, there's no reason to believe that once punched, a shark would swim to the surface. Uh, for sure not with someone like just grabbing his fin while he's just swimming. Lara Croft, I love you, but <laughs> you are very lucky, like always, uh, that there was just a combination of things that were, are very unlikely to happen. Journey to the Mysterious Island. I actually haven't watched this one. A follower suggested I look, watch this scene and comment on it. But I haven't watched the movie, so I, I just, I'm just watching the scene. Okay. Uh huh. Oh, it's an electric monster. <laughs> so this creature is clearly inspired by the electric eel. There are electric eels, and they do produce electricity. They use it usually to stun their prey or also as a defense mechanism against predators. What is interesting though is that the electric eel is not actually an eel, it's a fish, and it's more related to catfish than uh, the actual eels. The reason why we call them eels is because they kind of look like an eel. The electric eel only lives in rivers in South America and it rarely kills humans. However, a large eel can produce enough voltage to kill a human. However, that is very unlikely and that rarely happens. They don't like you know, produce bolts of electricity like that and, and that you can see throughout their body while they're just swimming around, like this doesn't happen. And it de definitely doesn't look like that. That looks like a creature that simply does not exist in the real world. The heart of the sea. So there you go, that's a sperm whale with some kind of spots, white and black spots. This did happen very, 
very, I don't know how frequently, but it, when whaling was the tradition all around the world, encounters with whales many times ended with the whale kind of ramming the ships because trying to protect themselves. The movie The Heart of the Sea is inspired by the very famous novel Moby Dick by Herman Melville. The book tells the story of a sailor that goes out to hunt this giant white sperm whale called Moby Dick. And in the book Moby Dick is kind of this whale that just rams ships and kills sailors. Moby Dick was actually inspired by a whale that really existed called Mocha Dick. Mocha Dick was a very large male albino sperm whale. It's usually encountered off the coast of Chile around the 1800s around the islands Mocha, hence the name Mocha Dick. What reports say is that the whale was actually a pretty chill whale and docile that usually just liked to swim next to ships until it was provoked and attacked. And once attacked, it did attack the ships or it did kind of try to free himself from the arrows and it kind of became almost like a mystic animal that all whalers wanted to catch. And it's said that Mokadik had more than 100 encounters with whaling boats until eventually he did get caught. Mokadik was an albino whale, like the one here in the movie is. Even though the one here in the movie is not exactly all completely white, it has some black spots. I'm not sure what they were going for there, if they were trying to look, make it look like ancient maybe. Albinism is a condition that occurs across the animal kingdom that is reflected in the lack of pigmentation in the eyes, the skin, and or the hair. And albino whales are known to exist, so Mokadik was one of them. Jaws 2. Okay, so that's an orca. And that's a large orca. What do you think? First things first. Tip of the snout, please. And basically what they're saying is that the shark or the great white killed this orca. This scenario would be very unlikely. It's more likely that orcas kill great whites than the other way around. Orcas are usually larger than great whites. They are smarter and they hunt in groups. Great whites are known to avoid areas where orcas are. In fact, there are some orcas who have specialized to, in, in killing great whites, I think off the coast of California, only to eat their liver, probably because of the very nutritious uh, tissue and very rich iron tissue of the liver of great whites. While I can imagine there being instances in which a very large great white is capable of maybe catching a, a orca that is alone for some reason and eating it, it's more likely that you will see an orca killing a great white or a, or a group of orcas killing a great white than the other way around. The idea that a shark will just wait around for people to get out of like a surface is just ridiculous. It's a shark. It doesn't know you are there. It cannot see you. It, 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 and if he did, he wouldn't care because sharks don't eat humans if they can choose. There's so many fish on in the sea. no reason for a shark to ever do something like that. Also that great white, the CGI shark, <laughs> very, I doubt that's like, no. A shark would never jump on a ship like that with the risk of really harming itself just to catch a human that might be up there. They're underwater, they cannot see you up there. They see a big ship, they do not see the human above the ship. This idea that sharks are just killing machines that will eat whatever uh, is, we now know that's not the case. This was back in the days when people didn't understand a lot about shark ecology and shark behavior and they just thought sharks ate everything and they would do anything to capture anything. That's not true. First of all, humans are not on the menu. Most shark attacks are very likely just a case of misidentification. That's why a lot of sharks sometimes bite and then don't eat. It's like a taste bite because they're like, oh wait, this kind of looks like my prey. And then they taste a bit of human and it just simply doesn't, it's not a taste they like. It's not, we are not a prey that great, great whites or any 
potential shark species that can attack humans eat. The amount of shark attacks is ridiculously low. If sharks wanted to eat you, there would be many, many more attacks than the ones that are, that exist. So this whole idea of Jaws, and I mean Jaws 2 is even about the shark who comes for revenge. This shark is uh, wants revenge on the death of the shark that died on the first movie. Sharks don't care. If you kill a shark, its brother is not coming for you. 50 First Dates. I've never watched this movie. This was a clip that a follower sent to me. in the wild. I don't feel bad for you. I know you got a little romantic thing going on. Okay, so Adam Sandler is talking to the walrus. Candace and Bernice. Yeah, no. <laughs> Candace, Bernice, and Rose. Yeah, I fell for one chicken. I'm losing. There are some walruses uh, that have tusks. Others don't. So the majority of them do have tusks, including females. So that's accurate. Walruses are very smart animals, so you can train them to react in a certain way to certain movements, just like you see here and how you see in a lot of shows in aquariums and in zoos and stuff like that. However, you would not be able to have a conversation with a walrus. In the same way that you can't understand what a walrus is telling you, they also can't understand what you're telling them. <laughs> Walruses are polygamous, which means that one Walrus has several mates and they usually have breeding seasons where all the females go to a beach and then the males come to copulate with the females and usually one male copulates with several females. Female can also have several partners. I'm not sure how the dynamic, group dynamic between walruses is in a contained aquarium like this, in a contained tank. If it would be in the natural environment, I guess one male could ha could you know, be together with three females, but it wouldn't be like a thing forever. It's they come, they do their thing, and then they separate, and then the female takes care of the pup when it's born. Seinfeld, marine biologist. There's a beached whale, she's dying. Does anyone here a marine biologist? <laughs> so if you haven't seen this, uh, this episode, George is not a marine biologist, he just said he was to impress this lady. <laughs> If you were a true marine biologist, uh, I mean, you could maybe go inside to assess the situation, but probably there wouldn't be much you could do. I love Seinfeld, and I chose this particular clip because I just, I just love it. And it does show a little bit of uh, what people sometimes perceive marine biologists do or the things they know. If there's a beached whale, a single person cannot do anything, even if it's a marine biologist. Call the local authorities. A marine biologist could potentially give you some indication on how you could save the whale or keep it alive. You have to maintain the whale wet, get some towels and blankets and make them wet and then put them over the animal so that the animal doesn't get dry and overheat and die because of overheating. Obviously, do not touch the blowhole, do not get too close to the animal's face. But besides that, I'm giving maybe some potential knowledge of how to keep the animal alive and things you shouldn't do. A single marine biologist couldn't do much. If you ever find yourself in front of a beached whale or an animal who is in danger, what you should do is call the local authorities. Do not try to do something all by yourself. You might get hurt and you also might hurt the animal. Just tell people to stay calm. Tell them you know, to not get too close to the animal unless it's to help. Don't touch the blowhole. Don't touch their uh, its eyes. Keep the whale humid, you know, until the authorities and people who know what they are actually doing come by. Marine biologists do not all work with whales. I do not work with whales. And just because I'm a marine biologist doesn't necessarily mean I would know what to do in a situation like that. Check out Seinfeld. It's a great show. Hollywood really doesn't put much effort in trying to be realistic. It's not what they are going for anyway. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you want to watch more ocean slash marine biology related content, don't forget to subscribe. And I got so many recommendations for clips and movies I should check out that I'm probably gonna be making more of these. If you guys have some re more recommendations of underwater scenes of a movie or a movie about underwater things, please leave them down below. I'm always looking forward to watching 
movies that portray either marine biologists or ocean related situations. I'm probably going to do one which is underwater scenes in anime. If you have any anime that has some good underwater scenes that you want me to re react to or break down, also leave them down leave them down below. And yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.